You're watching Unrendered on IKTV. I'm Tony Regisford, and my guest is Dr. The Honorable Linton Lewis. You can follow IKTV on Twitter at iConcepts. Dr. Lewis, yes. the challenge that you survived, <laughs> and um, as you were saying, that were the shoe on the other foot, you may not have mounted that challenge. Are you sensing that? Okay, that 135 delegates mm -hmm. out of the 270 that voted, mm -hmm. that clearly went the other way in terms of not supporting mm -hmm. you. Um, what does that say? How does that argue for your chances in East St. George and the way the hierarchy and the, 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 the caucus of the party mm -hmm. may be feeling about you, seeing that there's 50% of them want you removed as chairman? But I don't, I don't see it that way. And it was not that way either. Mm -hmm. um, as I said before... Mind you, we are in it, an election... No, yes, but I don't, uh, I don't see it that way. As, that, as the NDP that, 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 that I don't see it that way. Firstly, um, the challenge was against me last convention. Both Anissa Batiste and Daniel Cummins. So Cummins challenged you in yes, the last convention. Yes, that challenged me. How did the votes go <clears> in the last convention? I think I got about um, 19 or 20 or so votes more than him. And what about Anisia's She showing? got about 19 votes, I think. So if her votes went to Daniel Cummins, yeah. would he have won? Well, w w no. But I don't, I don't want or not to put it that way, mm -hmm. because they could have also come to me. Well, of course, yes. of course. Now, so the issue is that um, I, don't, I don't want to make heavy weather of the fact that there's a challenge. And I, mm -hmm. and I would not want to transfer that challenge or associate that challenge with my candidacy in, in the constituency of East St. George. As we say, it's a democratic party, and I would hope that people continue to see it that way. Um, I have been chairman for some time. People have always accused me of wanting to challenge the leader, but some people criticize the leader um, seriously. Let's say, for example, Frank De Silva. Mm -hmm. uh, I was his lawyer for some time. I would call him. I often call him and say, Frank, you ought not to be doing that. Please stop criticizing the leader in the way you do. I say you can be far more helpful to the party if you are more positive. For example, come to East St. George and help me, but I don't like the fact that you're criticizing the leader. I've called him so many times on that issue. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yet people will say that I want to <coughs> challenge the leader. Where, where for, is that for, coming from? I don't Linton? know. Where? For, for, where? I don't know. Where? I don't, because I've I don't heard know. it myself. I don't and, know. And why is it that I don't look know. at Linton Lewis? That's the point. And think that Linton is the person who is anxious to grab um, um, leadership uh, of the NDP. That is deliberately. At uh, one point they were saying you are Sir James Mitchell's um, but favorite it, candidate. But you see the problem is this, is that I can understand because I've had a close association with Sir James. As a matter of fact, it is through Arnim Eustace mm -hmm. that I was able to meet Sir James closely. Right. <laughs> and um, I have not spoken to Sir James since 2010, mm -hmm. since the last general elections. Sir James has never once had any discussion with me about wanting me to lead the New Democratic Party. Never. We have never had any of those discussions. But you hear people saying those things all the time. What he has done, he has come and he's been on my platform in East St. George, speaking on my behalf, like he's done for other candidates. Mm -hmm. He's given advice as to how to carry out the campaign in East St. George, like he's done for other candidates. So I don't understand why, um, but I think I do understand why people will be so mischievous. Why? 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 Tell me. I don't, people, people, I don't know if because perhaps my life's progression mm. such that they would, they would anticipate that that's what I would want. But if they were to look closely at my life, I have not, never been a person who challenged these things. I have sought personal development in a way that I can serve. I believe in the tenet that the most powerful men on earth are not those who exercise power and dominion, but those who serve. From a very, from a very early age, I've been serving St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I know what it's like to be of intention. I'll tell you this. You think, and I always say, it may sound simple to you, but you are in a wicked batting. Mm -hmm. And the balls are whizzing across your head at over 100 miles an hour. And you are 50 runs. You can walk out of the wicket, get out, and get out. You're thinking about yourself. Right. But in your mind, it is your country. It is amazing. 
as a 16, 17 year old, you are thinking about your country. I remember we played a third test against England, the West Indies youth team, on, when I was told there. I was batting in Sussex Arundel, mm -hmm. and I was on 93, I think. No, I almost got out. But all in my mind wasn't myself, you know. It was St. Vincent. You're thinking about St. Vincent. St. Vincent. Your team and you're thinking team, about St. Vincent. My team, St. Vincent, a Vincentian was going to school at Test Century. Yes. And, and so you grew up, and I played for 17 years. Mm. So you that has been you part of test me. Century. Was that a Test match? Yes, Test match, a third mm. Test in Ireland with West Indies U team. For West Indies. Okay, yes, yes, yes. West Indies versus right. England when I played there. So, and, and then even football. In your, in your mind, I remember very well we were playing against Barbados in Arnesville. Mm. I was a goalkeeper. The match went down to penalties. I saved three of them. I don't know if any goalkeeper done that in the mm. since. But in my mind, I would have thrown myself onto the goalpost because I was playing for St. Vincent, not for myself. So, so it's about service. So the same sentiment exists with your service Politics, to, yes. the, to the but, NDP but, and to politics. But I, I tell you, I'll tell you why also. Um, the last, when I returned to St. Vincent, 2004, and Patrice Reddock, she, could, she will confirm this. You, she actually came to England, mm -hmm. had a meal with my professor and, 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 and so on when I was teacher at the University of Durham. Right. And um, I was the only black lecturer in the department, I think, at the time. And I was advised not to return home to St. Vincent. I would have had a golden, a superb academic career. Mm -hmm. I'm writing three books. I would not have been struggling to finish them now. They're three textbooks. And, but that was not important to me. What was important to me was for me to be back in St. Vincent to the Grand and give the service. Dr. Lewis, let's press on. You mentioned about your achievements as party chairman, um, your extensive writings on constitutional reform, and you spoke about meritocracy as something that you spearheaded the, 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 the concept yes. um, and almost as if you think it's the party's mantra. Mm. However, at the convention, none of the main speakers, I'm talking about the leader, mm. um, Honorable Adam Eustace, mm. and the guest speaker, mm. Lucette King, none of them even once mentioned the word meritocracy. So there's, there's, there's a sort of gap because you, you're there holding on to this as, mm. as the party's mantra, yeah. right? But it didn't enter the fray in the main speeches. But it may have. It may have in mm. different ways without using the term meritocracy. I've often asked this question on the radio. If anyone does not believe in meritocracy, call me and tell me now. Nobody ever calls and says they don't believe in it. Clearly people some believe pe in meritocracy. So, some people say they don't think it, it will work. But... Um, they believe in it. And I, I, those persons, if yes. there's anyone who does not believe in a meritocracy, yes. then that person does not want St. Vincent to move forward. I, and I agree with you, but I think one of the tenets, though, that has to be addressed is starting, everybody starting out at the same, uh, at the same starting line, a level playing yes, field. Yes, equality at the Me outset. But yes, you see, but the you see one has to go with the other later. But no, what I'm saying, if you read my article, yes. Specifically with respect to education, that at those articles, three of them mm -hmm. I wrote on education. You will see how I discuss the issue of equality at the outset. How I'm able to look at students from the rural areas attending secondary schools. Right. How we can bring them from the beginning in line with those who attend perhaps. Dr. Lewis, schools. just superficially, mm -hmm. is that not what the ULP is? proposing to do with what they call the education revolution, creating all these opportunities no, for no, it's a different all thing. and sundry. Why is it different? It's different because... Why is that not level in the playing no, field? No, what is happening is this. Um, yes, universal secondary education, everyone mm. has an opportunity to go there, but I go further back. Um, if a child is unable to concentrate in school because mm. of nutritional problems, mm -hmm. then we have to be... Um, more paternalistic as a government in trying to ensure that that, that, those, that child has some nutrition. If that child is experiencing a medical problem, mm -hmm. um, there are some children who sit a certain um, area in the classroom, they can't see properly, they can't hear properly, they may have these sort of problems. 
And I, I was, in my articles, I wrote about having a sort of medical um, structure in place. At least you can assess. So you're saying that you're even going deeper than this? Deeper than that. Deeper than that. Deeper. Because, because so you, it, you it, believe in leveling the playing field? Yes, and here what happens is this. How could you level the playing field under the education revolution when some people are not able to pay for the subjects for their children, even though their children have the ability to write them? That is only left to those who have the, the, the money to be able to afford that. Now, in, in the articles and the New Democratic Party have been pushing the issue of paying for the sexy Yeah, but, but, but Dr. Lewis, in, in all fairness, you know, no one party can wave a wand and mend all or address all the issues. That so, is true. So I think in the main, it is fair to say, or it may be fair to say, that there is a serious effort made by the ULP. I've had um, one of your colleagues, mm. Sinclair Leacock, Honorable mm. Sinclair Leacock, on this program, agree with that, mm. that give Jack his jacket. Mm. You have to give, according to him, the ULP some kudos for what they're doing with education. Yes, and we will build on that. In the same way when we built the Eleven College, uh, um, it's now benefiting the ULP in a great way. We will also build on what the ULP um, leaves But shouldn't it be us. that way in Th terms of successive governments? That is how it's going to be in the next Co should, Shouldn't it be that way in terms of successive governments? Exactly. I so I so, so why, why, it is, why mm. is it mm. that, and I'm just talking politics here now, mm. why is it that since adult suffrage, mm. you're hearing that when another government comes into power, mm. the one that's been booted out, said, oh, we did this, we started, if mm. we didn't start that, mm. it's a dynamic thing, because, let's, let's, because let's raise a level of conversation. Yeah, but the problem is this, that yes. when the ULP got into office, they said NDP did nothing for 17 years. That's Do you really NDP. believe that Dr. Gonzalez and the ULP thinks that the NDP has done nothing? In I know they don't believe it, but they say, because I, well, but they say, they say and, and the, those, their followers, yes. they're supposed to be shaping the social and moral consciences of our people. Yes. There are people who will follow their party blindly yes. and will believe there are a number of persons who may not have followed the trajectory of the New Democratic Party, the performance of the New Democratic Party, the stewardship of the New Democratic Party over 17 years, mm -hmm. and therefore to hear that may want to believe that that is true. But if that is true, we won 15 seats to 19 Now, are you saying that our people and, 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 and don't understand what's but, going and on? And that's fair enough. And in, the, sa in, in the same way, mm -hmm. an opposition party levels criticism at the governing party. And I'm not talking ULP, NDP here. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the system now. Yeah. I'm talking about the system, the narrative yeah. of politics, right? In the same way, you are trying to lead people to believe that Somebody's deliberately mashing up the country. They don't know what they're doing. You know, it, it really is useless rhetoric. No, I wouldn't. If you justify, if you're saying that by virtue of the negligence of the ULP, that black secretary uh, um, uh, was more widespread than it ought to have been, mm -hmm. then that, that, there's nothing wrong about that. If, if you're you, saying if that, you speak that, that, about that, specific issues, that's a point, yes. but if you are, and, and, and obviously they, mm. they can count it, but mm. if you are making sweeping statements, mm. okay, like you said, the ULP said that the NDP did nothing, yes. that is the sort of rhetoric that I, I want to know who's going to put an end to it. Would a Linton Lewis put an end but to that you, style I of I politics? would like for you to, to identify an NDP candidate who makes such sweeping statements without justifying them. Dr. Lewis, we're at the end of this segment. So when we come back, we'll pick it up yes. at that point. You're looking at Unrendered on IKTV. I'm Tony Redsford chatting with Dr. Lewis. More when we come back.